Let us pray. Almighty God, when you rebuked the Pharisees as you guided your disciples, you told them, listen to what they say, but do not what they do. I ask you to encourage this congregation here present to listen what comes from my mouth, ignoring the messenger, but embracing the message. I ask all these in your holy name. Amen. First, let me say how so very privileged I am to be with you this morning. I've worshipped in this cathedral since 1975. I'm therefore a member of this cathedral for many years. As I listen to the choir and listen to the young children making their performance, there is a sense in which we could simply go home without a sermon. There is a sense in which they have said all that we ought to hear. But yet there is a sense in which there is meaning in sharing the word of God. I agonized what it is that I'm going to share with you. And I'm acutely aware that we have had readings from Chronicles and that we have had readings from Paul's first letter to Timothy. But I will make reference to many other verses in the Bible, particularly at this time. And my sharing with you may very well be titled Agonize, but Organize. We live in a country where we make many claims. One of the claims we make is that we are 80% Christian. And if we are Christians in the order in which Christ's prescription is to be true to, we would be a perfect nation. Yet I want to submit to you that this year, the Ernest and Young Index on Corruption says that we are the, most, the sixth most corrupt nation on earth and the most corrupt nation in Africa. How do we reconcile that with our purported Christianity? We are the most ethnic nation in Africa. We are holding elections on Tuesday the 8th the day of August. 2017, and if there was an in-tray on prayers in heaven, I have no doubt in my mind that the Kenyan tray is full with prayers for peace. We pray for peace sometimes because we fear, but I have always held the view that peace is a child of the intercourse between justice and truth. Our own national anthem says that justice be our shield and defender. In unity may we dwell, and then we will have peace. When we are assembled here, the young children have exhorted us, praying in different tongues, appealing to God that we may know peace. The question is, are we touched only momentarily so that in a few hours from now, when we leave this sanctuary, we will relapse into our old ethnic ways, or we are touched for all times. Today, as you agonize, 
I want you to go home and read Paul's second letter to Timothy at chapter 3. And you will find Timothy telling his audience through Paul that in the last days there will be a form of Christianity where people will love themselves and they will be doers of evil. Today, when you leave this sanctuary, inspect your heart and ask yourself whether you are a Christian in the manner that is contemplated and prescribed by Christ, or you are a Christian in the fashion that Paul talks about in his letter to Timothy. Today, you fellow Kenyans who are drawn from different tribes, I want you to pose to yourself the question, are you a Luo Christian or a Christian Luo? Are you a Kikuyu Christian or a Christian Kikuyu? Are you a Kamba Christian or a Christian Kamba? In the things that you do on a daily basis, is the blood of ethnicity thicker than the blood of Christ? I'm urging you today to go and ask yourself, particularly because we are talking about leadership and the choice of leadership. Even in churches, even the clergy who are seated here, pose to yourself the question, do you, on a daily basis on the pulpit, preach to us self-serving, ethnically correct sermons? Or you are agents of Christ, preaching the uncompromising message of Christ? Today, as you organize, and you go out there, and choose your leaders. I want you to remind yourselves of the words recorded in the book of Matthew, at chapter 23. Call not anybody your teacher or your father, because there is only one Father in heaven. Because those who exalt themselves will be humbled. And those who humble themselves will be exalted. Today, as you sit there, remember that you on the 8th day of August will be in the same position as Samuel was when he was sent to the house of Jesse the Bethlehemite to choose a king. Will you, like Samuel, be impressed by the bodily stature of Eliab? Or you will hear the divine voice saying, but there is another one in the field who is after my heart. Will you who are sitting here today as Christians, on the eighth day of August, when you are called upon to vote, will you remember that sometimes before the birth of Christ, as recorded in the book of Numbers, there was a man anointed of God, the man called Moses and that there was rebellion against him by Korah and Dathan and 250 others from the house of Levi and Reuben and that God consumed 14,700 of them 
Will you rebel against the truth? Will you who are seated here give meaning to the reading that we have heard from Chronicles where God speaks to Solomon, the son of David, and says that if you follow the decrees of your father, then peace shall not depart from your house. But will you also remember that God did in fact say to David that because you have taken Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah the Hittite, and killed him by the sword of the Ammonites, the sword shall never depart from your house. Will you who are present here this morning remember that your lureness and your cumberness is immaterial? Will you give meaning to the words of the prophet Isaiah as recorded in chapter 19, verses 24, when God says, Egypt, my people, Assyria, my handiwork, and Israel, uh, Israel, my inheritance, or on the day of the eighth, you will elect your Luo because he is Luo. Or elect your Kamba because he is Kamba. Or your Kikuyu because he is Kikuyu. The content of their character notwithstanding. These are the questions that I want you to agonize about. Because history teaches me and the Bible teaches me that we cannot mock God. Many times we come to this sanctuary and we pray, but I dare say to us that unknown to us the God that we worship may have turned his ears and eyes away from us. Because it is true, the Israelites prayed times without number, but as recorded in the book of the prophet Isaiah, at chapter 6, until King Uzziah died, the word of the Lord did not come to Isaiah, the son of Amos. Is it possible that we are in such times? Is it possible that our cup of iniquity is full? That we have mocked God for so long? Many times, I listen to many clergy, not my clergy here, making the claim that all leadership comes from God. That is untrue. Not all leadership comes from God. And if you doubt me, go home and read the book of the prophet Hosea at chapter 8, verse 4, in which the Lord God says, You raise unto yourself kings and princes that I have not approved. So, on the 8th day of August, fellow Christians, when you go out there, will you choose men and women who love God, their ethnicity notwithstanding? Or will you be consumed by the spirit of Mammon and Baal and choose men and women who are unworthy, agonize over this. Because it is still true that when you have evil men and women in power, you will know no peace, you will know no joy. Choose you now. Do not be of two opinions. Elijah exhorts us, choose now. Don't waver between two opinions, between the God, the demigod that you have erected unto yourself as ethnic warlords. Let us avoid the idolatry that we are engaged in as a nation. Listen to Elijah. Listen to Joshua in chapter 24. 
when he tells the Israelites, choose you now. Remember when we were across the rivers, Terah, the father of Abraham and Nahor, worshipped other gods. When you crossed over after we had taken you out of Egypt, you worshipped the god of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. Choose you now whom you shall serve as for me and my house. We shall serve the Lord. So you who are here, take a minute. Kings, take a minute. Use your words up. See the evil and the venom that is being spewed. Look at your tweeters. And those who are doing so are Christians. The Lord exhorts us not to speak for too long like Pharisees of old. And therefore, as I conclude, and as you agonize, I was asking myself as I sat there, if Paul were to write a letter to Kenyans, which of his letters would he choose? Is it his letter to Timothy? Or to the Philippians? Or to the Corinthians? I know the one that he would choose. The letter to the Galatians at chapter 3. You foolish Kenyans. Who has bewitched you? Who has bewitched you that you know that in the mind of God, as recorded in Acts, there is no Jew nor Gentile. Yet everywhere you look, you see Kikuyus and Kambas and Luos. Who has bewitched you? Who has bewitched you? Who has bewitched you? We have a beautiful nation. The ambition of the leaders that we have does not deserve the destruction of this country. There are men and women in this country who believe that unless they are leaders, the country must be destroyed. It is our duty to stop them. It is our Christian duty to stop them. Martin Luther King Jr. used to say, if you have not found anything for which to die, you have no business leaving. And Christ is right. Those who want to save their lives will lose it. How can we live in a country where Luos and Luhias are now transporting their wives to their rural homes? Kikuyus who are in Nyanza and Western Province are going back to Central Province, and yet we are 80% Christian. What kind of Christianity is that? Who has bewitched you? Julius Nyerere used to say, and I agree with him, when you are called upon to choose your leaders, beware of leaders who fall under these five principles, Mwalimu used to say, and he was a believer himself. Beware of leaders who love power for its own sake. Beware of leaders who love prestige for its own sake. Beware of leaders who love property for its own sake. Beware of leaders who love popularity for its own sake. And beware of leaders who love pomposity for its own sake. So my fellow Christians, we are urging you to go and agonize over what I've said. But let us organize. Because on the eighth day of August, we have an opportunity like no other. So let us not receive the rebuke of Paul that we have been bewitched. Let us receive the praise of Paul as recorded in the book of Acts 
at chapter 17. Let us be like the Christians of Berea, who after they had been preached to, they would go out and ask, did Paul and Silas preach to us the true word? The bad news is yours. If I spoke anymore, I would be pharisaic. Let us pray. Almighty God, you are from everlasting to everlasting. The men and women who are gathered here today are those who know that they are spiritually sick and they have come here to seek your salvation. Have mercy upon them. Have mercy upon our country. Have mercy upon the children that have prayed here. Let your angel of death on its way to latter-day Gomorrah find that there are ten men and women for whose sake you shall preserve Kenya. And I have no doubt in my mind because you say those who ask in earnest shall be given unto them. I ask all these in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. God bless.